Shane Kern, we've just watched Roscommon lose here in the Hyde, the Galway in the Connacht semi-final. How are you feeling as a proud Rossi after that? Uh, to be honest, very proud of that. You know, look at, um, I thought in the second half uh, they raised the gallop. You know, they got the, the, the substitution at half time and Keane McKeown for um, Donny Smith worked quite well. A bit of rechange of the, the team as well. Gave it a little bit more energy and more impetus. And despite Ian Burke getting the first score of the game to go five behind, um, we hit back with one two from from Kieran Murtha and Keane McEwan score. So they've they done really really well to get themselves back in the game. And then maybe two incidents has kind of changed it. I felt you know um, a goal would kick out that was turned over, a pass into um, Young Cox. He drops the ball and down the other end when it probably should have been in the back of the net, our side. Down to the end, Matthew Tierney puts two between the score between the team, and then a Roscommon counter attack. We give the ball away very, very cheaply. Uh, Dylan McGrath or Dylan Dylan McHugh comes up the, the left hand side, pops the ball up, hits the post, down to Damien Comer, ball in the back of the net, and there's the very, very tight margins that the game kind of turned on, you know. And yeah. and you know, I think when Davy Davy Burke looks back on this, he he'd be very, very proud of the lads. I think the supporters as well would be proud of the effort they put in, and it's those margins um, in these big games uh, that have the difference between winning and losing. Yeah, we'll come back to that couple of minutes there, just before the 48 minutes, where the game kind of swung, Roscommon got back on top. Why were Roscommon so poor in the first half? They were flat. They only kicked three points, three frees from Kieran Murtha. Galway looked far the better team, though, in that first half. Yeah, you can't win games if you, if you play in, in the first 35 the way Roscommon did. And I think there, there are, I suppose, questions that Davy and his management team and the players will have to work out over the next three to four weeks um, before they go into the All-Ireland series. It was very flat, it was very pedantic, it was very slow. Uh, even the defensive setup, uh, I felt, was, was far too deep and it allowed Galway far, more, far too much, many opportunities to get the ball between the lines. And on the flanks, we were under pressure, I felt, a small bit, the way Galway moved the ball left and right. They got overloaded on the left and right hand side at all times and we just couldn't cope with the run and capacity of them um, and Why was that happening? I don't know I think we stood off them far too much I think that's probably one of the big things and allowed Sean Kelly pick the ball up really at a very high speed differential to any of the other players and they were able to pop those passes in between the lines and get their scores much much easier and if you allow players pick up speed if you allow players change the ball very quickly from hand to hand and their line running is very good and their, their score getting is quite good I think that's really one of the major reasons why it did happen and uh, far, I think for, for me Roscom were far too deep and probably showed Galway maybe a little bit too much respect in the first half stood off them and didn't dominate the game and uh, when you give Galway who are in the top two to three maybe teams in the country um, and many people's favourites for the All-Ireland outside of probably Dublin or Kerry you know they're, you, they're, going, to, they're going to do damage to you you know and uh, I think that'll be one of the great regrets that Roscom will have that they didn't give themselves a chance to get a platform like they did against Mayo to actually play the game on their merits on their terms you end up chasing the game and then when you end up doing that you expend a lot of energy and uh, that said um, they put that energy in in the second half and uh, they got some rewards from it but again Galway's quality and their experience off the bench I think you know we've seen seen uh, Rob Finnerty coming in and Killian McDaid both played in All-Irelands Roscommon are bringing on young lads who aren't really championship savvy at this stage of their careers yet and uh, that takes time and, and you have to build towards that Speaking to Burke after the game Davy Burke he said that the emotion of the Mayo victory he feels played into the the poor first half performance the lads were flat he reckons they got it out of the legs in the first half and a few choice words in the second half set them up to really show themselves as good as they are um, should that be happening though like the height was hopping there were 16,000 people here can emotion have that much of an impact Davy said they haven't been training that hard over the last two weeks well I, I don't know about the training too hard I don't think at this stage of the season really it's about maintenance coming into it and you're mm. you're trying to find out you know them, these itchy little g- gitchy glitches can you get them out of your game after the Mayo game you know there was a lot a lot of positives you have to manage that emotion you know and you have to manage the pressure that, that comes with it and pressure at this level is a privilege and the players have to learn how to embrace that and that in the past has been, been, been a Roscommon problem we can raise it maybe 
for one or two gallops, but unfortunately we can't. We're not consistent enough. There's reasons for that. You know, we've a very young team. We've we've players that have come into this squad this year, um, who've embellished the squad, but we're reliant on on still a certain cohort of players to kind of to really be at it. And End and Donny Smith were well marshaled today. One would have to say, Kieran Murtha was outstanding. Uh, Connor Daly had enough in his hands with 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 Comer. Uh, Niall Daly wasn't as influential as he normally would be. And you know, if them five or six players are having maybe not an off day but below par um, it's very difficult for us to get on top and we rely a lot on in the, in the middle of the field to actually carry ball and give that give us those dangerous positions like Sean Kelly actually gave gave uh, Galway today nearly almost throughout the game and I suppose you know for many people here Murtha was man of the match and, and rightly so I think he scored one seven um, to me Ian Burke was, was really fantastic for Galway as well when he had his paws and everything didn't he everything like he, was, he was like a basketball net. every time the ball went in he just stuck to him and um, you know I listened to Gary Sice on, on Monday night I was with him in Galway and he said for, for him he has to play in this Galway team and uh, while he only may have I think he only scored a point the first one in the afternoon he was usually influential as an out ball and in particular the way Galway play you know when they're playing on the break at pace to have a guy like that that they can kick 50 60 yards into and know it's going to stick in there and you're giving your chance for your comers your Shane Walsh's to come onto the ball well then that's a massive massive difference so them little things are things that Roscommon have to work on and we have the players to work on it it's about knuckling down now over the next few weeks I think I'd say if the, if uh, Davy looks he'd probably give them a break now for 10 days and say look lads recalibrate and, and uh, let's look to look forward to the All-Ireland Championship I don't know if it'll be 10 days but he certainly told me it'd be a couple of days of a break anyway but you're right we might come back to where you see Roscommon are now heading into that All-Ireland Round Robin series they're going to be third seeds in the group same as Mayo same as Tyrone um, but Galway, let's just talk about them for a minute because I put it the poor choice after the game that everyone's talking about the amount of depth he's developed this year. Joyce's retort was, look, a depth is no good. Yet the lads have to make use of it. The boys coming in off the bench or the boys starting. But like he started nine fellas that played in the All-Ireland final last year to Kerry. And the three lads he brought in, Peter Cook, who's played inter-county football before, Ian Burke, a former All-Star nominee, and John Maher making his championship debut today. That fella had a mighty game on Enda Smith. They clearly targeted that matchup today. Some people were speculating before the game would go even put Sean Kelly on Ender Smith, but Maher did a mighty job. No, I, f- I felt myself that you know that uh, that Galway would leave Maher on him because even his his um, performance in the, in the league final for for Galway against Mio was 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 quite fantastic in the absence of Kelly McDaid and you have Paul Conroy there in the middle of the field as well, an old stager that very experienced and, and again holds the ball really well. I think one thing about Galway, I think where they have to probably brush up on if they're going to be serious All Ireland contenders this year, and the problem and the will over time is their defence. They do offer up a lot of chances. And, you know, Roscommon had two, probably three good goal chances in the second mm-hmm. half. Had we brushed up and had we been able to execute that with the final pass... It looked um, like Conor Daly had that ball in the back of the net. It did, you know. And again, I think maybe the pass was a little bit overcooked from Enda into him at the back post. But it was a really, really good chance. Now, those are the sort of things that a team like Roscommon needs to go your way to put that energy and that fire underneath the crowd to stay in it. Um, but Galway, you felt, always just had that extra spring in their step that if they needed to get a score, they could get that score a little bit easier than Roscommon at crucial times. And look at, you, know, you say you get your own look, you do, uh, you have to make it as well with the goal. They probably got that. But Damien Comer had a chance in the first half for a goal, very good save by Connor, Connor uh, Carroll. These are the things that ebbs and flows and matches and we can all point to them but for me the big turning point was, was the Conor Cox one I think mm-hmm. had that stuck in his hands and even got a point from it you know again there's that little bit more energy but these are the margins and you know when Porrick looks at Galway today he would say there's a lot to improve on but they have the time now to improve on they're going to go in as four seeds obviously they'll have a home game um, against the third seed you'd fancy them to get off to a win and start and um, funnily enough we can play them in that uh, in the draw but um, it, it'll just be interesting to see how the year goes by if Galway can I think eradicate that defensive flaw if you want to call it that and what do you um, think that flaw is because they look like they had Roscommon like that Roscommon attack fairly well covered in the first half they got quite a few scores from turning them over as well what went differently or what went wrong for them in the second half well Roscommon had a purple patch of 1-2 1-3 you know if, if the likes of Kerry hits a 1-2 or 1-3 it's suddenly a 2-3 2-5 you know that's mm. the difference at, that, at this level and you know we coughed we, we missed a couple of late passes um, and if these the better teams execute them particularly under pressure and particularly in Crow Park and, and if you're coughing them up the chances often enough 
someone somewhere will punish you without a doubt um, and he'll look at that and he'll say that's somewhere we, we can actually improve on maybe their forward play as well could improve a small bit I think the matchups today I suppose were funny Connor Daly on, on Damien Comer uh, you would say that probably Damien Comer won that one Sean Kelly on Donny Smith that one was won by Galway Brian Stack on the other hand would have would have won the one again maybe it was um, no, Sean, right, Kelly, right, Sean yeah, Kelly on, right. on yeah, yeah I think it was or, you're right, yeah. and uh I think the other one then, uh, the other one then was Stack Brian was Stack on watch. on watch, and I thought Brian Stack was outstanding. And I think during the week I, I mentioned on one of the podcasts that the two best defenders for me throughout the league were Sean Kelly and Brian Stack, and today the two of them were outstanding. Um, but you know we, we just weren't, um, I suppose we we just couldn't keep the keep the the, the, the fire quenched on all score on all on all places. And uh, as I said, Ian Burke to me was 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 was, was majestic. I'll be doing the power rankings and off the ball this week. I'll be put under a bit of pressure now to make a couple of changes. It's currently Kerry in first, Galway in second, Dublin in third. We didn't see the dubs today, but they put up 4-32, I think, against Leash. Kerry obviously won last night by 20 points. Where would you have Galway now as All Ireland contenders? Either they're up there. They're probably. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't discount Mayo. Funnily enough, um, let's not get into Mayo today. No, we won't go into them today. But I, look at Galway. are going to be there, and they're, actually, they're probably a different team to Mayo in terms of of what they have going forward and in around the middle third. So they're probably fra- fractionally ahead of them. I'd say at this stage, and Mayo are younger. Um, I, I think Galway are serious contenders with, with Dublin and Kerry. I think when it boils down to it, we've we've super se- we've seeds seeds one and super seeds really, and it's going to boil down to them three or four maybe. Tur- the likes of a Tyrone could come into the mix, maybe a Mio might come into the mix, but uh, you know they're there, they're thereabouts. They've been very very close over the last couple of years, and as you've mentioned, um, the strength and depth now. You know Ian Burke coming back in. Dylan McHugh there that was was fantastic. We had Ram, Roscommon connection uh, on the other wing um, with Jung Sweeney, um, very very good player as well. And uh, you know if they can add, if they can get out them little feints out of their game, I think they'll be there. They'll be they'll be they're, they're formidable. Roscommon have had a very positive start to the year. They finished third in Division One. They had that great win in Castlebar against Mayo. The crowd were up today for this game. What is progress now in this All Ireland Round Robin series? This new format that we have. What does Davy Burke need to show us with this common side? Well, firstly, I think it's been a great year. You know, I think if you start out at the beginning of the year, and um, you'd stay in Division One, um, almost get to a league final, funnily enough, play really well and consistently in it, and um, finish the season well, beat me over in Castlebar. There's a lot of green shoots out of today. I would be very positive about, about today's performance on, in, in certain aspects of it. Um, and, and you've got that four or five week window now where he can take stock and get ready for the, for the championship. I think to get to an All-Ireland quarterfinal would be huge. Um, now, if you draw a Dublin away, you know, or a carry away, you're on the back foot straight away. So confidence sometimes can can ebb out. The problem for a Roscommon or any team that wants to break into that elite group is the depth of your squad when the games start coming thick and fast lads get a bit leggier um, you pick up injuries obviously and if the depth of the squad isn't able to keep up with the quality that you're losing off it uh, then results will, will ebb and flow you know and confidence is everything at this, this stage of the season uh, and going into the round robin and I think you'd want to be avoiding Dublin I think that's the one you don't want in Crow Park to start and possibly carry away Galway in 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 um, in what do you call it, Imperial Stadium could represent one of the better draws for us, funnily enough. And Derry up in Derry may not if Derry were to go on and win the Ulster Championship, it may not be the worst one either, you know. So um, after that, it's it's going to it's going to kind of come down to you know two and three and and where can you sit in the twelve and the ten and and down to the eight. Exactly, there's a lot to happen, Shane. It's uh, Galway Sligo in the Connacht final on May seventh. Kerry and Clare will play the same day in the Munster final and the All-Ireland draw for the round-robin series will actually be made on the 2nd of May so we'll have that draw then. Shane Curran, thanks a million.